Okay, we went over this section. And it's really the first major section in the cosmology. So we're talking about 29E. Uh, the section ends at 31. Okay. How many terms can we pick out that underlie the whole idea of analogy? Then we need the section on analogy in order to see how he talks about it. Okay, let me start. This first section is called the section on heaven. After this, he talks about earth. So therefore, we can take it as a unit. principle of the universe. Somebody to read? Yes. All right, I'll give it a whack. I'm looking for reinforcement. Let us now state the cause. You want to start there? Yes. Wherefore, he that constructed it, constructed becoming and the all. He was good, and in him that is good, no envy arises ever concerning anything. And being devoid of envy, he desired that all should be, so far as possible, like unto himself. <clears throat> this principle, then, we shall be wholly right in accepting from men of wisdom as being above all the supreme originating principle of becoming and the cosmos. Okay. Right. Model. 
Oh, good. For God desired that so far as possible all things should be good and nothing evil. Right. Why? Because that the principle presupposes the qualities of the demiurgos are going to therefore be transferred into the creation. <coughs> That's what he's doing. That way, the model will become close to the copy. Okay? Okay. So, wherefore, when he took over all that was visible, seeing that it was not in a state of rest, but in a state of discordant and disorderly motion, he brought it into order, out of disorder, deeming that the former state is in all ways better than the latter. Hey, there's no creation out of nothing. He's just bringing order, right? Through this, this idea of creation, therefore, is from chaos to order. Good, keep going. For him, excuse me, my accent. For him who uh, is most good, it neither was nor is permissible to perform any action save what is most fair. As he reflected, therefore, he perceived that of such creatures as are by nature visible, none, is, none that is irrational will be fairer comparing holes with holes than the rational. Okay, to do this creation, he has to reflect. Has to reflect on things that are not yet created. So he can do that in his mind. Mm. This is the demiurgos reflecting independent of creation and making judgments about what it is he can visualize. Okay, go ahead. And further, that reason cannot possibly belong to any apart from soul. So, because of his, this reflection, he constructed reason within soul and soul within body as he fashioned the all, that so the work he was executing might be of its nature most fair and most good. Go ahead. Thus then, in accordance with the likely, in accordance with the likely account, we must declare that this cosmos has verily come into existence as a living creature endowed with soul and reasoning, owing to the providence of God. Okay. This, Second stage. Go ahead. Second stage. Well, okay. This being established. We must declare that which comes next in order. In the semblance of which, excuse me, in the semblance of, of which of, in the, excuse me, it's a question. In the semblance of which of living creatures did the constructor of the cosmos construct it? Hey, there are living creatures What are they like? Another likeness, right? Another likeness. What is it like, living creatures alike? We shall not deign to accept any of those which belong by nature to the category of parts. For nothing that resembles the imperfect would ever become fair. But we shall affirm that the cosmos, more than aught else, resembles most closely that living creature of which all other living creatures severally and generically are portions. Hey, that means there's a likeness between the intelligible living 
preacher. And this is its likeness, living creatures, because he adds living creatures and us. We are the mean between the two because mankind can participate in the intelligible. What is that living, intelligible creature? That's the idea in the mind of the demiurgos called the intelligible. Okay. So this is, as it were, the second stage in creation based again upon analogy. Go ahead. For that living creature embraces and contains within itself all the intelligible living creatures. Just as this universe contains us and all the other visible living creatures that have been fashioned. For since God desired to make it resemble most closely that intelligible creature which is fairest of all and in all ways most perfect, he constructed it as a living creature, one invisible, containing within itself all the living creatures which are by nature akin to itself. Therefore the cosmos, right, most resembles this, and the key term is us, because we can directly participate in that part of creation, the other living creatures do not. So we become the mean between the two. Hmm. Is there more? Yes. Are we right then in describing the heaven as one? Or would it be more correct to speak of heavens as many are indefinite in number? Infinite, in number. infinite excuse me, are, as many are infinite in number. One it must be termed, for if it be framed, uh, excuse me, one it must be termed, if it is to be framed after its pattern. For that which embraces all intelligible living creatures could never be second with another beside it. For if so, there must needs exist yet another living creature which should embrace them both, and of which they too would each be a part. Yeah, since this is one, this is a oneness. This is unique, so is this. Therefore, there can't be a second. Hmm. Okay, pull it together. Uh, okay. Uh, that would embrace them both, and of which they too would each be a part. In which case, this universe could no longer be rightly described as modeled on these two, but rather on that third creature going on with the, uh, which continues them both. Wherefore, uh, which contains them both. Wherefore, in order that this creature might resemble the all-perfect living creature in respect of its uniqueness, for this reason its maker made neither two universes nor nor an infinite number. But there is and will continue to be this one generated heaven unique of its kind. Right. Resemble, what does that presuppose? <sighs> likeness. Therefore, likeness again, right? Occurs as three dynamic places, therefore it underlies all creation. Since likeness presupposes analogy, ooh, what does he think analogy is? Right. So look, um, um, all we need is a couple of sentences more to pull it together, right? You know what he's going to do? He's going to say, if this is true, how fundamental is analogy for all creation? going to say, you know what it is? It's the bond. It's a bond that pulls all of these things together. It's not just a way to order terms, as they sometimes do in mathematics. It has a bonding, right? This, this has a bonding effect. Keeps things in 
But through this, you can also see that we're talking about a mean analogy. This is a four term. This is a three term. He's going to pull the two of them together Ooh. in the next paragraph. Okay? It's a good one. Here it goes. That's yeah, a good one. Hold on. Now, that which has come into existence must needs be a bodily form. Right? Therefore, it's going to be visible and tangible. Yeah, you know what you're going to need? You're going to need something visible and tangible that's going to be solid like the earth. And you're going to need, therefore, fire and earth, fire to illuminate it, earth for its solidity. Right? Mm hmm. And there should be con uh, and two things alone, but it is not possible that two things alone should be conjoined. Here we are. A third. Here we are. Do it again. But it is not possible that two things alone should be joined without a third. You need a third, right? Look here, you need a third. Or? There must needs be some intermediary bond to connect the two. Both are possible. Okay, go ahead. And, but, okay, wait a second. And the fairest of bonds is oh, that. What is it? The fairest of bonds. The fairest of bonds. Go ahead. It's that which most perfectly unites into one, both itself and the things which it binds together. And to Talking effect, about a bond. Okay, go ahead. And to effect this in the fairest manner. The, the most it, beautiful manner. In the most beautiful manner. Go is ahead. the natural property of proportion. Analogy. Anal uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now he's going to spell it out. Four. Whenever the middle term of any three numbers, cubic I, or r square. I, Middle term in any three numbers. Oh. Okay. I, or, I see. Uh, an analogy. Arithmetic analogy. Which, which? Let's go. Okay. Uh, for whenever cubic or square, I don't see that up there, but okay. For whenever the middle term of any three numbers, cubic or square, is such that the first term is to it, so is it to the last term, and again, converse of, conversely, so that the last term is to the middle, so the middle is to the first, then the middle term becomes, in turn, the first and the last, while the first and last become, in turn, middle terms. And the necessary consequence will be that all the terms are interchangeable, and being interchangeable, they all form a unity. Okay. That's a philosophical description of a mean analogy and an arithmetic an analogy, sometimes called proportion. You know what he's saying? He said, this is fundamental for all creation. Therefore, all creation is bound together by analogy. Now he's going to go for the higher. Go ahead. Okay, now. If the body of the all had, excuse me. Now, if the body of the all had had to come into existence as a plain surface, having no depth, one middle term would have sufficed. Yeah, one middle term would be enough. To bind both, together both itself and its fellow terms. But now it is otherwise. 
for it behooved it to be a solid shape. And what brings solids into unison is never one middle term alone, but always two. Hey. Need a square. We need a higher or level, higher order analogy, don't we? Mm. Okay, he's going to do it. Thus it was that in the midst between fire and earth, God set water and air, and yeah. having bestowed upon them as far as possible a like uh, ratio, one towards another, air being to water as fire to air, and water being to earth as air is to water. Didn't quite get that. Um, he joined together and constructed a heaven visible and tangible. Huh. Air being to water is water. Algebraically, that's what we're talking about. Wow, that's a good trick. Air being to water as water is to air as. Uh, Therefore, water being to earth. Okay, right? for these reasons, and out of these materials, such a kind and four in number, the body of the cosmos was harmonized by proportion and brought into existence. These, condi these conditions secured for it amity, so that being united in identity with itself, it became indissoluble by any agent other than him who had bound it together. No, clever. Right? Very clever. And, uh, for those of you who forgot your algebra, So we're going from two to three, you're having fun. So forget, if you want to forget what's going on, you can ignore the fact that the fundamental property throughout this entire thing, repeating itself many ways, is an allergy. You wouldn't want to do that. Pretty interesting. Very good. Very good. Wow. Thank you. Curious? Therefore, you're going to have to get into a little bit of analogy. 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 Photography. Well, I'll get into photography, then I won't have to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Marvelous. And I usually don't take pictures. Yeah. <laughs>